Hi everyone, welcome back to All Access Arcade. Today we're checking out the demo of Potion Tales, which is a game I've had on my to play for quite a while. I first read about this back in early 2023, but never got around to checking it out until now. So let's jump right in and see what it has to offer. Oh, and we're getting right into it. Good day to you. We've got a cute little fire spirit, first thing. Is this place a potion shop? Oh, and immediately our first dialogue option. Judging by the enchanted cauldron right beside me, I'd say so. Or look around and take a guess. So both are a little bit sarcastic, but I'm going to go with the left option. Judging by the enchanted cauldron right beside me, I'd say so. To be frank with you, I'm in desperate need of your services and your fastest ones at that. So I wonder what he needs from our potion shop. I came down here for some personal errands, but I got lost. I don't frequent the Undercity. The Undercity, that implies this might be some sort of illegal potion shop that doesn't necessarily operate within the confines of the law. I'm interested in hearing more about the Undercity, but let's see what this fire spirit needs. Well, I rounded a corner and bumped into a giant shadow. I may have gotten a little startled. I might have set them on fire. That seems like a pretty cut and dried situation. You set them on fire or you didn't set them on fire. The shadow turned out to be a furry golem. Here we've got another dialogue option. And how did they react? Or a furry golem? I'm gonna go with the right option, a furry golem. Um, I'm familiar with other types of golems, like rock golems most notably, but I haven't heard of a furry golem. So I'm interested to see what other information we get from this little fire spirit. Well, this golem had fur. Well, I mean, that makes sense with a name like Furry Golem. I was hoping for a little bit more background information, but we'll see what else they have to say. I'm talking heaps of fur. They didn't even notice the fire at first. You wouldn't believe how much fur can fit on. And another dialogue choice. Didn't you need help quickly? I get it. Back on track. Uh, they did come in saying that they needed help urgently. So we're going to go with the left option. Didn't you need help quickly? Right. Let's just say they weren't too happy about that. I can't say I blame the golem. I wouldn't be too happy if I was set on fire either, even if it was an accident. So let's see what we're going to need to do to help out this fire spirit. I looked for help at once and saw the sign above your door. You see, a fire spirit's flames aren't easily put to rest. Usually I don't visit places like this. What does this fire spirit mean, places like this? What are they implying here? Are they implying that we're shady? You mean to say I am shady? Or, but you needed a professional's help. I mean, I feel like the fire spirit is kind of implying that this is a shady potion shop. I'm gonna go with the left option. You mean to say I am shady? No, 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 that's not what I meant at all. This is, I love my shop, very pretty. I like how quickly the fire spirit backtracked on this. <laughs> I'm begging you, can you brew something for me so I can save them? So it looks like we're going to jump into our first round of potion brewing and make something to give to the fire spirit, presumably to help the furry golem. So let's see what their request is. Only if it isn't too much trouble, of course. And then another, I love how many dialogue options there have been. It, this game really gets into the options very quickly. I guess I have a soft spot for spirits in need. Or if you'll repay the favor. I feel like they shouldn't have to repay the favor. I feel like they should just pay me because I, I'm running a business. This is a potion shop. They should just pay me for my services. Um, I've been clicking a lot on the left option. So we're just going to go with if you'll repay the favor here and see what happens. Of course, I'm very grateful to you. Okay, now what? Um, don't you want to start moving to prepare the potion? Ah, uh, here we go. Yes, let's move. Skip the chit chat or I don't know how I might need a tutorial. Let's go for the tutorial and have the spirit explain to us how we make potions. You don't know how to move? Did you inhale too much fume? Oh, no, 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 no. What will we do? Please tell us what to do. I guess I'll just have to help you remember. Yes, please. So how do you usually move around here? You we need to walk around a lot to search for ingredients in this dark place. Uh, so here, the W 
the A, the S, and the D are highlighted in red text. So I'm assuming that indicates we need to use the WASD keys to move around the potion shop space. Is there something else you need help with? No, no, everything under control. Or so, how do I start making a potion? Well, let's continue with this tutorial and get a little bit more explanation. You probably have some sort of ancient magical tome with potion recipes. I would hope so. I hope we don't have to wing it and just start throwing stuff at the cauldron. You find something like that, choose a suitable potion that will help me with my accident. All right, tell me when you've chosen a potion. Uh, so first, let's look around a little bit. We've got this workbench in front of us. Um, I'm just looking at the things here. So we've got a candle. Ooh, I can pick up this pumpkin. Don't, don't know what I can do with it. I'm just going to put that back. I can also pick up this snow globe. Let's put that back for now, too. We've got a cutting board, it looks like. Oh, a stack of coins. That looks like it's a bowl of some sort. We've got some mushroom candles. I'm going to put that back. Don't need that. Ooh, looks like some sort of rusty nail. Okay. So, ooh. I don't know what this is, but it makes a really nice noise when I picked it up. That's very pretty. Alright. So, done exploring this counter. It doesn't seem like there's much that I can do here. So let's turn. Alright, so I just turned right using D. Uh, so I see here we've got the cauldron in front of us. And then it looks like the counter we were just staring at is on the left side with some more items and then some shelving here on the right. So I turned right again with D. So this looks like all of the potion ingredients on the shelves. And then with the W key, I zoomed in to see the individual shelves and then moved up. And now I'm moving up and down from the top shelves to the bottom shelves using W and S. So up here, we've got some claws that I have no idea what this is, but the pretty sounding star, something that looks like a crazy dragon fruit, some mushrooms, let's see, um, some feathers, some crystals maybe, more pumpkins, some, I don't know, some tarot cards or something. Put that back for now. And then over here we've got a bunch of coins, uh, a tail, a snake, something. A bunch of stuff over here that's got smoke or fog coming out of it so yeah looks like we've got tons of potion ingredients but no magic potion book no tome yet so let's keep looking around ah so looks like we've got our potion tome over here on this stand it also looks like there's a gumball machine or something over here on the right i wonder what that's for anyway let's check out the the potion book and see what we can find so the problem the spirit has is that the column is on fire. So we're going to need something to put out fire. So we've got potion of good health, potion of mana energy. Neither of those sound appropriate for a golem that's on fire. Uh, herbal tea, potion of wobbly consciousness. Mm, the, neither of those sound great either. Let's keep going. Okay, potion of energy. I don't think that would help. Potion of True Alloy. That sounds like a metal potion. I wonder what that would do. So, Potion of True Alloy. That's the first one that sounds like it could be useful. So it says, this potion turns any material of an object into a corresponding metal. It's not completely understood what the criteria for this assignment are. Experiments are ongoing in search of the creation of precious alloys. Beware, this potion works on any object, including plants, animals, and other conscious beings. All right, so... If we gave this potion to the golem, it would turn into metal, but but the golem's on fire, so would it then be melted because it's on fire? Or would removing the fur just put the fire out because there's no more source for the flames? I don't know. That one's a maybe, the best I've seen so far. Let's keep looking. Potion of the Dying Caterpillar. It has dying in the name. I'm, say that, I'm going to say that probably isn't going to help. Potion of Smoke breath i mean smoke fire this potion produces thick smoke in the lungs of the consumer which usually escapes through the nostrils doesn't sound very useful potion of transformation okay okay this could be promising this potion transforms the user into an animal the form of the animal is depending on the situation and character of the user beware the user also inherits the instinct of the animal 
I, yeah, I feel like transforming the goblin into an animal isn't going to solve the problem of being on fire. So we're going to skip that. Potion of Truth, I don't think would work either. Invisibility, Acid Spit, neither of those sound great. Potion of Ice Touch. Okay, so that's the closest one we've seen to water, I guess. Um, so this potion turns the touch of the consumer into ice, letting him freeze any liquid he touches and covering everything with a la layer of ice. Beware, slippy. I don't think quick growth is going to help. Quick shrinking, slumber, inner darkness, flame breath, light, laughter, greater voice, greater senses. Ooh, what is greater senses? The potion enhances the senses of its user. Oh no, that's that probably would make it worse. Um, and the potion of Hallow's Eve. And now it looks like we're into a list of potion ingredients. Oh, and now we've got a little bookmark up here at the top of the page that looks like a potion bottle. So if we click on that, it just takes us back to the beginning of the book. So I think the best options here are the True Alloy or the Ice Touch. Because there was it wasn't a potion of rain or anything like that. Nothing that very specifically mentioned water. So in my head, Potion of Alloy would remove the source of the flames, which would be the fur of the furry golem so hopefully the flames would go out and then the potion of ice touch would turn the golem into ice and then ice is just really cold water so hopefully because the flames were near the ice it would cause the ice to melt and then the water would put out the flames on the golem i think those are the two best options so let's take a look at the recipe here for true alloy so golden tooths booze, a garret card, a crushed gold coin, and a crushed mountain cabin nail. Hmm. All right, so true alloy. Let's go look at the ice touch again really quick. Hmm. This potion turns the touch of the consumer into ice, letting him freeze any liquid he touches. So this is the touch of the consumer. So if... The idea is that the fire spirit is going to give this potion to the golem. If the golem drinks the potion, then anything the golem touches turns to ice. So I don't know if it would necessarily work out the way I'm thinking in my mind. Whereas the potion of true alloy turns the material of any object into a corresponding metal. And it does say it works on other conscious beings. So if the golem ingests the potion of true alloy, it should turn into metal. So we're going to go with the Potion of True Alloy. So the ingredients are the Golden Tooth Booze, a Garrett Card, a Crushed Gold Coin, and a Crushed Mountain Cabin Nail. So I'm going to click on this mushroom and hopefully it'll flip back to those ingredients. There we go. So we need Gold Tooth Booze. And none of these. Okay, so Golden Tooth Booze. We need this. We need a Gold Coin. A Garrett card and then a mountain cabin nail. Now oh, here we go, the mountain cabin nail. So let's look at these ingredients one more time because I'm gonna have to pick them up from the shelves, I think. A Garrett card, a row of magic cards rumored to bear the power of an ancient game the old witches played. Gold coin, a golden coin used for passage, trade, and status. Golden Tooth's booze, a very strong liquor fabricated by the black market baron Golden Tooth. And then the mountain cabin nail. Nails from old cabins standing in the mountains. No one knows who made them. They're bigger on the inside than the outside. Every year, a couple of reckless adventurers get lost in their interior. All right, so we know the ingredients we need. Some of them said uh, crushed. I'm not sure how we would crush them. Uh, there was another dialogue option back with the fire spirit, so we're gonna go talk to them again. All right, uh, I think I've got one. Now what? Then you just have to follow the recipe in order. Okay, so that seems to be very important because it's highlighted in yellow. Follow the recipe in order. Just put the ingredients in the cauldron on your right. Okay, concerning the ingredients, hopefully they'll give a little bit of guidance on what crushed means. So concerning the ingredients, yes, I can see at least a few dozen right behind you. Thank you for that astute observation. You can't identify them, can you have? Maybe you have them cataloged somewhere? Yes, I already, already figured out the cataloging in the book. I'm not sure how to crush them. 
you might want to have another look at that recipe book of yours. Just concentrate. You got that. Talk to me if there's something else that confuses you. Ah, there we go. Any idea what cut, crushed, or liquefied means? So the potion of true alloy requires crushed ingredients. Apparently cut and liquefy are also some other options. So we're going to ask the fire spirit to explain that. You probably need to prepare some of the ingredients. You should have tools to crush ingredients to a powder or squeeze the liquid out of them. I see a cutting board as well as a mortar and pestle right in front of you. Okay, so we looked at the cutting board earlier. I wonder if this bowl is a mortar and pestle. Oh, and there seems to be a liquefier if you just turn left. I don't think the potion will work if you prepare them wrong. All right, fire spirit, we're going to work on it. Let me work my magic, fire spirit. All right, just give me the potion whenever you're ready. All right, we got this. Oh, and they said there should be a liquefier to the left. I wonder if that's this gumball looking machine. We'll figure that out later. So in order. So first we need golden tooths booze. Um, oh, I think that's right here. This looks like the picture and it says golden on it. So we're just gonna go ahead and drop some golden tooths booze in the cauldron. Put that back on the shelf and then the next item was a card i believe it's one of these items so we're going to go ahead and put this card in the cauldron and then we needed some crushed things a uh, crushed gold coin a crushed mountain cabin meal so first let's grab the gold coin there's a whole stack right here on the counter we're going to drop it in the mortar and pestle and Click on the pestle to make that work. Now we've got some gold powder that I'm going to throw into the cauldron. All right, so last we needed a mountain cabin nail that is also crushed. There's this nail right here on the counter. I'm gonna put that here and then we're gonna crush it up with the mortar and pestle. We've got some nail dust, I guess, and into the cauldron it goes. I just clicked on the cauldron and it gave me a potion. All right, it, I think it's right. Let's compare. Yep, that looks the same as the picture in the potion book. Let's go ahead and give this to the fire spirit. All right, just give me the potion whenever you're ready. So I've got the potion and now I'll just click on the fire spirit. Ah, thank you, you really did it. Great job, thank you. So is there anything else I can help you with? Maybe you forgot. So they're offering to give us more of a tutorial, uh, but we're going to go ahead and remind them about the golem they set on fire, the reason they came in in the first place. Didn't we just set someone aflame outside? Hmm, I can smell something burning. Weird. I'm going to go with the left option again. Didn't you set someone aflame just outside? Oh, searing sparks. You're right. I have to go right now. I'm really losing my coals. That's a cute line of dialogue. I like how they wrote this to be in line with the fact that it's a, a fire spirit. Spearing sparks, I'm losing my coals. Love it. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so we've helped out the first customer of the potion shop, gave them the potion of true alloy, and now they're back. By the boiling pits of the smoldering mountains, I'm back. Well, nice to have you back, fire spirit. Your potion worked brilliantly. We saved the golem's life! Alright, awesome. I hope they explain how the potion worked brilliantly because I'm interested to see if my logic for the potion of true alloy worked the same way in the game as I thought it would. When I rushed outside, the golem was lying on the ground, burning brightly. I hastily opened the potion bottle and poured its contents on the fire. The fire turned into solid iron, a metallic flame now adorning parts of the golem. Okay. I thought maybe the golem would turn into the metal, but apparently the fire turned into metal. So it didn't work out exactly the way I thought, but it still works. So that's what matters. I tried prying it off, but to no avail. At least they weren't burning anymore. So now the furry golem is covered in iron flame spikes, I guess, but they're not on fire, which was what the desired result was. I checked right away if the golem had any major injuries or if the fire got to their core, but they just brushed me off. I'd most likely have gotten a good beating. I was a little too fast on that one. <laughs> I'm just glad the golem is all right and that we prevented some greater misfortune. Same. 
Thank you for helping me. It was good to come here. You're welcome, fire spirit. Helping lost souls in need is my profession, or I'm glad you didn't burn down my shop. We're going to be nice. The fire spirit was nice and very thankful that we helped them, so helping lost souls in need is my profession. I'm glad that there's people like you down here, but I should really start cleaning up my own messes. You're a great alchemist. Why, thank you, fire spirit. And really, as a water mage, I should have been able to handle this myself. What? Wait, what? What? Um, our next dialogue option, I was already wondering what the staff was for. And you're a water mage? I'm going with this. That was my initial reaction. A fire spirit that's a water mage? I'm really interested in the backstory on this one. I was in such a hurry, I completely forgot to introduce myself. I'm Spiritus. Well, that's a nice name. An apprentice at the Flooded Academia. That sounds like a school for water mages. I'm currently in my second year, and I promise you that I can use water magic. I just can't concentrate too well when I'm nervous. Poor Spiritus. I really have to work on myself. I need to stay calm in stressful situations like that. Spiritus, we all need to work on ourselves. But the first step is realizing the action that you need to take to make yourself a better spirit. Also, no more late night Grindlewood snacking. I'm very happy to have made your acquaintance. I'm forever indebted to you. You did say you'd repay the favor. Keep it in mind. May our paths cross again one day, witch. So I'm an alchemist and a witch and also a potion maker. I wear a lot of hats, apparently. All right, so Spirit has left, and now we have another character that's a talking flower, perhaps? I really like how this character has a different color text from Spiritus that matches their design. I think that's a really nice choice. And I also like how the text kind of moves around as the character looks around the potion shop. I, uh, I think that makes it just a little bit more fun and engaging. I like that touch they did. So let's see who this character is and what they need from us. I'm Ruma, the local grave tender. Well, a pleasure to meet you, grave tender, or we have a grave tender around here? In a place called the Undercity, I'm not surprised that grave tender is a job title. So I'm just going to go with a pleasure to meet you, grave tender. It's been a long time since I heard someone calling it a pleasure to meet me. My profession isn't as satisfying as it used to be. Not many people are keen on dying these days. So I wonder what this grave tender considers satisfaction in their job. They will probably reveal it as we go on, so let's let's keep going and see what they have to say. They either use any means necessary to prolong their boring lives, or they are naturally long-lived. And don't get me started on all the undead who come back as ghosts, zombies, or other death-resistant troublemakers. Uh, so it seems like the grave tender has a serious problem with people who don't want to die, or people who don't stay dead. I guess that makes sense considering their job title. The only way they'll stay in their appropriate graves is if they lived a fulfilled life. I found myself wondering whether I could rely on your discreet services to acquire new clientele. What is Rumo implying here? Using your discreet services to acquire new clientele when their job title is grave tender. Uh, we've got a dialogue choice here. Discretion is one of my most valued qualities. Or, so you're implying... So I want to know what they're implying, because if I think they're implying what they're implying, uh, they want us to help them unalive some people so they can do more grave tending. Like, oh, don't worry. It isn't what you think it is. Oh, well, maybe it is. Hey, at least they're being open about their intentions here. It is what Rumo, it is what I think it is. There's a centaur who you may have heard of, Atreus, the unbeatable son of the race of quick demise. The, the what? So another dialogue choice. Atreus sounds familiar or son of the what? Um, I understand the word centaur and I understand that Atreus is the name of this centaur, but the rest of those words uh, don't make a lot of sense in context and it's probably just because it's the lore of this world so we're going to say son of the what and hope that rumo explains a little bit more the race of quick demise is an obstacle course that is notorious for its lethality okay let's see what else rumo has to say you know the classic swinging axes hidden spears and deadly owl shark pools i wish there was a dialogue option here to ask about owl sharks because 
are they sharks that can fly or owls that can swim? I really want to know what, what the combination of owl and shark is in this animal. Even so, Atreus was, through most of his career, an underdog or an under horse human. Okay, Rumo. He was on an unending losing streak until one day when he won against a former favorite. Didn't Rumo just say that this race is known for its lethality and Atreus was on a losing streak? Couldn't you, couldn't you only lose a lethal ra race one time? Because it's lethal? I don't know. We'll see if Rumo gives us a little bit more context and see what they actually want from us or if they're just here to explain this race. Thenceforth, he just kept winning. Nobody could ever beat him. Okay, so it's Atreus uh, Centaur just keeps winning the race. The races are growing stagnant. He achieved everything he could have dreamed of. Okay. Where's this going, Rumo? First, you came in and asked, sorry, implied that we should help you gain some new clientele for your grave tending. Now you're talking about this centaur who keeps winning a lethal race. And now the races are boring and Atreus the centaur has achieved everything he could have dreamed of. So where are we going with this? Sounds like a fulfilled life, wouldn't you agree? Okay, I think I see where we're going with this because Ruma did say that the only people who stay in their graves are people who have lived fulfilled lives. I think I see what Rumo is uh, asking for, but we will see if that's what Rumo actually wants. I think he's ready for his retirement from life. A grand finale for his story. Okay, so it is exactly what I thought Rumo was asking for. Retirement from life. That's uh, one way of putting it. I can already see the grand ceremony, blooming flower arrangements, a big imposing tombstone. Another dialogue choice. It seems like you have it all planned out. Or aren't flowers your, you know? Okay, so this right option does seem to confirm that Rumo is some sort of flower person. I'm interested to how they respond to the right option. So that's what we're going with. Aren't flowers your, you know, ancestors? They are treated with the utmost care so that they live on when I cut their blossom. I like how there's lore built into this answer. Some world building. Some world building built into the fact that flowers are in fact Rumo's ancestors. That's a nice touch. Even so, they hurt. They'll sacrifice part of themselves to adorn the dead. But first, his death is paramount. I have some friends in the course crew who can get, grant me access to his stable. I can't say I'm surprised because I did hypothesize that this is an illegal potion shop. So of course someone like Rumo would probably come into an illegal potion shop in a place called the Undercity and ask for like a death potion, basically. I guess not everyone can be spiritists who just wanted to help a golem they accidentally set on fire. I guess we'll see what we can do to help. I don't know if I want to say help in this situation. We'll see if we can accommodate Rumo's request. I Let's just keep going through the dialogue and see what happens. There mustn't be any suspicion of external influences. It would be ideal if his passing seemed like some sort of tragic accident. The next race of quick demise is tomorrow. Then I will have the opportunity to pour something into his drink. Okay, so a potion that needs to be ingested. Can you brew a potion for my predicament? I think so. All right, so there's no other dialogue options and Rumo's not saying anything else. So let's take a look at the potion book. So Rumo wants this centaur to retire from life. I do remember a potion in here that said something about dying. Ah, potion of the dying caterpillar. This potion is a deadly poison that will kill almost any living being that digests it. Beware, really deadly. Well, Rumu did say they would pour this into the centaur's drink, so Potion of the Dying Caterpillar will kill almost any living thing that ingests it. So this could be an option. I'm just going to check the rest of the potions really quick to see if there are any other options. Rumu did say it needs to look like an accident, so 
let's see what else we've got. Okay, potion of good health is definitely the opposite of what Rumo is suggesting. Potion of good health is going to do the opposite of what Rumo is looking for. But I'm interested in trying it just to see what the outcome would be. Part of the reason I was very intrigued by Potion Tales is that every potion affects the story in a different way. So giving Rumo a potion of good health is going to have a different effect than using a potion of wobbly consciousness or the potion of the dying caterpillar. So each potion is going to have a slightly different result and interaction with the characters. So I mean, it might be funny just to see what happens if I do give Rumo the potion of good health. But let's let's just double check a couple of other things to see if there are any other options. So mana energy don't think that would help. Herbal tea, I feel like, would just make the centaur really calm. Wobbly consciousness. This potion shifts the user into an alternate state of consciousness. The state will have different effects on the user. For example, outbursts of rage, waves of sadness, attacks of hysteric happiness, madness, and more. It can also lead to amnesia and permanent perception changes. So this could potentially make Atreus unable to race but not retire him from life, which is what Rumo's looking for. That doesn't necessarily mean that's what we have to help them with, but that was the request. Um, Potion of Energy. We already used Potion of True Allies, so I'm going to skip over that one. I want to try some different ones. So Potion of Smoke Breath produces thick smoke in the lungs of the consumer, which usually escapes through the nostrils. Hmm, I wonder if smoke in the lungs would suffocate someone. Um, Potion of Smoke Breath is a maybe? All right, Potion of Transformation, Potion of Truth. I don't think either of those would be useful. Invisibility turns the user invisible, so I don't know if that would be good. Potion of Acid Spit. This potion turns saliva into a green slime, which is corrosive. The slime corrodes through almost any material except organic matter. <clears throat> it doesn't corrode through organic matter, which means it's probably not going to have an effect on the centaur. So let's skip that one. Ice touch we looked at. Quick growth doesn't sound like it would do well. Quick shrinking would make someone smaller. Slumber. Inner darkness. The potion reveals the inner darkness of its consumer, showing him his greatest fears. Hmm. I don't think so. Flame breath doesn't seem like it would do well. Flight, laughter, voice, senses, and then All Hallows Eve. Hmm. This just says the wind carries the sound of wrestling chains, the smell of burnt cinnamon, and the mischief of autumn nights works best during fall. I'm not even sure what the potion of Hallows Eve does. Hmm. So the dying caterpillar obviously is going to have the permanent retirement effect that Rumo is looking for. Potion of Smoke Breath produces thick smoke in the lungs of the consumer. Maybe could suffocate them? Or I could just go with the Potion of Good Health and go for the exact opposite of what Rumo is requesting just to see what happens. Let's see. The Potion of Good Health. Mending bones, closing wounds, curing stomach aches, reducing fever, and more. The Potion of Good Health is the little helper of the body's own healing powers. Beware, if one ingests too much of this potion, the body will get used to its healing effects and cease healing on its own. So the Potion of Good Health does heal people, but it does say the body will get used to its healing effect and ceases healing on its own eventually, so it could potentially have a negative outcome. I think I'm going to try the Potion of Good Health because I want to see what happens. Okay, so we need a Hero's Cap, a Cut Temple Rat Tail, a Crushed Free Breath Leap, and Liquefied Afternoon Dream. Alright, so let's go back to the ingredients and see what we're looking for. Okay, so we've got a Hero's Cap, a delicious mushroom that resembles a hat. This hat went in fashion for young adventurers through a story about the life of three heroes all connected through this mushroom. Okay, that's cute. So we need a Hero's Cap. Um, oh, a temple rat tail. Temple rats live in churches, shrines, temples, and other religious and spiritual places. They feed off the offerings people devote to their gods. In most religions, they either mean great fortune or misfortune. Okay, so we need that. Um, else, we need the rat tail. Then we needed the, oh, the free breath. A plant formed like a lung. It strengthens the lung capacity of any kind of being. And then what was the last one? Ah, the afternoon dream. The fruit, when eaten, makes the consumer tired. It's also an ingredient in different illegal drinks. All right, so we know what we're looking for. Let's go back to the order. Hero's cap, cut temple rat tail, crushed free breath leaf, 
liquefied afternoon dream. All right, so first let's go look for a hero's cap, which is a mushroom that looks like a hat. Hero's cap. Hero oh, I bet it's this mushroom right here. It's got a little red cap and a little leaf like the picture, and that just goes in whole. So we're going to throw that right in the cauldron. Oop. All right, and then we needed a temple. That looks like a rat tail. Um, so yes, cut temple rat tails. We'll go back to the cutting board and then cut that up. There we go. We've got a cut temple rat tail into the cauldron. It goes and back to the book. Next is a crushed free breath leaf. So that was a plant that looks like a lung. Ah, it's this one up here on the shelf. So we're going to grab one of those and we'll put it in the mortar and pestle. Crush that up. Perfect. Put that in the cauldron. And then finally, we needed a liquefied afternoon dream, which is this uh, crazy looking dragon fruit. I think this gumball machine is the liquefier. So, oh, okay. So the afternoon dream is in there. Click the handle and there we go. That is liquefied into the cauldron. Now, after all the ingredients are in the cauldron, you just have to click on it to get it to brew the potion. And now we have got, that looks right. That looks like the potion of good health. Let's double check. Yep. All right, let's give this to Rumo the grave tender and see what happens. Thank you, potion dealer. You're welcome, Rumo. Farewell for now. I will see you after the race. So the race is tomorrow. So I wonder if we're going to close up shop or if we're going to wait for Ruma to come back and tell us the results. Let's see. Oh, hey, we got another customer. May the gods bless your steps, my lovely potion peddler. Oh, man. What is this guy trying to sell me? That's that's my first reaction. You must be the witch who is brewing potions that aren't obtainable through conventional means. I mean, you're not wrong. We are in a, I do run an illegal potion shop. I'm sorry if I'm too straightforward, but you are perhaps in search of a new god you are considering devoting yourself to? Oh my goodness. Is this, is this character like a, trying to convert me to their religion? I know, I know, your salvation is probably already provided for by one of the many around here I think I think that is what they're trying to do I think they're trying to convert me to their religion but these old philosophies are getting kind of stale don't you think eh? you want a god that specifically supports your needs um how would you know what those needs are the answer for your search is me my enchanting friend does this person is this their spiel do they just go to all the shops in the undercity and just say I'm here to be your new god I choose you to be the first follower of this aspiring god. Well, look, we got a dialogue option here. Let's just see what they say. Why would I want to join the cult of a random customer? I do names before considering changing my spiritual guide. Hmm. Let's go with the right option. I do names before considering changing my spiritual guide. Hmm. A name? How about Lixlow? That sounds pretty godly, right? I have a feeling that name is probably made up. Fitting for someone who will turn your world upside down. What, what, what is what what is the pitch here? They want to be a god, but they're also a, like a, a late night infomercial. This character looks the most familiar, but so far they strike me as the most absurd, and that might be intentional by the developers that that the attitude is so out of line with the way the character looks because so far we've talked to a living flame water mage and a flower grave tender and now we just have some random person that's like hey i'm gonna be your new god let's let's continue and see what happens i am delighted to meet you i'm not sure i can say the same Lixlow. i really would like us to be more than god and follower i see you as my protege where is this going? This guy is borderline unhinged. What even qualifies you to be my new god? Or, I don't want to be involved any further with your delusions. I really, I'm going to go with the right one again. I don't want to be involved any further with Lixlow's delusions. I 
can't really blame you for still having doubts. Let me tell you a little secret about a power I recently discovered. I'm like, oh my goodness, a power. Oh, Wixlow recently discovered. I can't wait to hear about this. I was out late at night partying when I encountered a dubious man who was selling illegal potions in a corner on the street. Sounds like I have some competition here, never mind the fact that Lixlow, the god, was out partying late at night, and apparently that's how they discovered they had ascended to godhood. I'm more concerned about my competition. But let's see what else Lixlow has to say. I was curious. I never tried a potion myself, and the night was still young. So I purchased one, which enhances your sense of consciousness. I think we have a... I think there's a potion like that in the potion book. I drank it down to the last drop. Then I experienced an existential event that shook me to the core. Interesting. Let's see what this event was. In this moment of sacred clarity, I saw myself as the god of gods. So basically what this guy is saying is he went out and got really high and saw himself as a god. So now he is. Again, this is the most absurd character of the three that we've seen so far, in my opinion. But it kind of works. It is my destiny to use the power of potions to extend beyond my fellow deities. So not only did Lickla go out and basically just get high and decide, I'm a god now, but they think they're better than all of the other gods? But that isn't even the end of it. I noticed that the people around me also received epiphanies. Okay. The trader told me the potion would only affect me for two hours, but I was in this advanced state of mind for two days. I'm not sure how any of this qualifies him to be a deity. I was helping him to see the fabric of true divinity for the first time. My goodness. <laughs> I really enjoyed all of the writing so far and think that each character has a very distinct voice and it has been well characterized. I think uh, Lixlow's is the best so far because it really exemplifies uh, kind of like a zealot who's trying to convert you to their way of thinking. It's really well done. I know I'm destined to become a new god. I was gifted to enhance the power of potions from beyond the capacity of mortals. But wouldn't a, as a potion seller, wouldn't I just be able to make people stronger potions? Like in my mind, it kind of like works like a bartender. Like you can just make a stronger drink by adding more alcohol to it wouldn't potions work kind of the same way anyway uh, we've got another dialogue choice i'm sorry to have ever doubted you you're you aren't serious are you so i have been choosing the more skeptical answers when dealing with Lixlow, and i'm going to continue that trend and select you aren't serious are you i'll let this blasphemous comment slide this time acts like he's doing me a favor I'll prove to you that I'm more than capable of being your god. No thank you, Lixlow. I am fine. I am happy being a potion seller in my little potion shop in the Undercity. Can you just tell me what you want and I'll make you a potion? I'll just need a little help from you. There it is. They always want something. What exactly do you need help with, Lixlow? You know that the day of praising and offering is coming up soon, right? I did not know that, but I have a feeling Lixlow was going to tell us more about it. Everybody has an opportunity to make the appropriate offerings and rituals for their gods. Okay, so some sort of festival, maybe. In all honesty, it's just a big flaunting of egos for the already established gods. Okay, this will be the perfect stage for my debut as a new member of the Pantheon. Sounds like Lixlow wants to go to this god-praising festival and just take everyone else's followers. Um, I don't know what kind of potion would do that. We'll see if they give any more information. And I'll leave the choice to you, my protege, with what kind of power I will attract my new followers. Okay, so that's exactly what Lixlow is going to do. They're going to show up at this festival that's praising all the gods and say, Hey, I'm a new god. You need to praise me. And we need to make a potion that will give them a power to attract new followers. Okay. I'll trust you with this matter wholeheartedly. And another dialogue option. I have no other choice, do I? Or, you piqued my interest. Let's roll. I'm going to go with uh, the left option because I feel like Lixlu will not go away until I give them a potion. <laughs> not really. I hope you'll warm up to your new god soon enough. I do really appreciate Lixlu's confidence in the fact that eventually I'll come around and accept them 
as my new god. It's not going to happen. All right, let's go to the potion book and see what we can do. So Lick was looking for something that will give them godlike powers. We already made potion of good health, so we're going to skip that. Potion of mana energy. Every living being has a mana reservoir. Some are even able to tap into it and release the energy within to produce what we know as magic. This mana energy is provided in the form of this potion. Beware. If the being ingesting the mana potion has not enough space in their mana reservoir or isn't able to channel it, the surplus will be released in unpredictable ways. And there's a note that says, can open a gate? I mean, that's maybe. I mean, that's a definite maybe. Uh, sounds like giving Lixlo a potion of mana energy would allow them to do magic or potentially open some sort of, like, magic gate? Hmm. Herbal tea probably just make them very calm for a relaxing evening sitting before a kettle. I don't think that will be helpful. Potion of wobbly consciousness. Lixlo already talked about his higher state of being with this other potion they took, so they might have taken a potion of wobbly consciousness. A potion of energy, I'm not, to keep one moving through a stormy night or give one strength in times of hardship. A potion that supplies the consumer with mental and physical energy. Hmm, doesn't sound like the best option. We already did true alloy, so let's skip over that one. I don't think dying caterpillar is what we're looking for. Potion of smoke breath is smoke in the lungs. Potion of transformation, I mean, I guess transforming into an animal could be considered a godlike Ability. But I don't know if Lixlow would turn back, so it might not be the best. Potion of Truth. This potion forces the user to tell the truth. It also increases the need to reveal secrets. This note says, maybe the most powerful potion. I don't know what that would do, because in Lixlow's mind, the truth is that they are a god, so I don't think the Potion of Truth would have much of an effect in this scenario. So we'll skip that one. Invisibility. Okay, the potion grants its user invisibility. It also turns every object invisible it comes in touch with. So a disembodied voice does seem kind of godlike. Potion of acid spit. I mean, maybe. Turns saliva into green slime. Uh, ice touch, we already read about. Quick growth lets the user grow to an immense size in a short amount of time. Don't use too often or there will be no city left. Potion of quick growth does seem like it might be slightly dangerous in like a crowded setting. So maybe not that one. Potion of quick shrinking. The potion shrinks the user to a much smaller size in a short amount of time. Beware, don't use somewhere crowded. Seems like Lixel will be in a crowded place, so I don't think that is the right option either. Potion of slumber makes the consumer very tired and puts him to sleep. Probably not. Potion of Inner Darkness, hmm. So the potion reveals the inner darkness of the consumer. I don't think that'll be the best. Flame, flame breath, I mean, a person breathing flames is pretty out of the ordinary. That could definitely be a godlike thing. Ooh, flight, potion of flight. This potion makes every living being that ingests it airborne. If the user concentrates, they can control their flights. Potion of flight might be the way to go on this one. Um, let's see, potion of greater voice. Enhances the voice of the user, so Lixlo can just talk louder. A oh, potion of greater senses. Maybe this was the one that Lixlo took, not the potion of wobbly consciousness. And then the potion of Hallow's Eve. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure what the effect of this is. So maybe potion of flight. Or what was the other one that I thought would work? Potion of flight. Oh, or the potion of mana. Hmm. I'm interested in the result with Potion of Mana Energy, so I'm going to make this one. And we need a Dark Alley Light, Crushed Blue Riverbed Crystal, a Cut Crying Moon, and a Crushed Starry Night. So let's go look at our ingredients. Alright, none of those things. Oh, a Crying Moon. A mushroom that dispenses a briny liquid that drips from its cap, giving the impression of tears dropping to the ground. The li this liquid is sometimes used as a ray of spice. Okay. And also a dark alley light, a plant that only grows in abandoned lanterns. They're often used by thieves and other beings with suspicious intent because of their unique and weak light. All right, interesting. So those two items. And then we also need none of these things. We also need a riverbed crystal. Crystals induced with mana. It's rumored that these crystals only grow in rivers where mages used to bathe. They come in different colors, which relate to different effects. The colors can be blue, purple, and green. 
And finally, Starry Night. Oh, this is the one I like. A flower which resembles the night sky. The star constellation changes depending on the season. Okay, so let's go back. So we need a dark alley light, just normal, a crushed blue crystal, a cut crying moon, and a crushed starry night. All right, I think the alley light is right here. So we'll take the dark alley light. Let's grab one of those. Throw it in the cauldron. All right, so we need a blue crystal. Let's see, we've got a pink one. This one looks blue and that needs to be crushed. So let's go to the mortar and pestle. So that needs to be crushed. So let's put that in the mortar and pestle. Grab the crushed blue. And then we also needed a, hmm, I can't remember. A dark alley light, got it. Crushed blue riverbed crystal, got it. A cut crying moon and a crushed starry night. So a crying moon is a mushroom that looks like it's crying. So let's take a look at the shelves. So I think this one here by this jar with cat ears is the starry night, but we need a crying moon. Ah, I bet it's this right here. That mushroom looks like it's crying and that needs to be cut. So let's put it on the cutting board, cut it up. Bup, bup, bup. There we go, we've got a cut crying moon. In it goes. And then we need a crushed starry night. Yeah, I really like this one. All of the ingredients have different sound effects when you pick them up or when you put them down. The sound design in this game is really nice, but the starry night has been my favorite so far. All right, in it goes. Those should be all of our ingredients, so let's go. Oh, I think that's right, but let me double check the book. Yep, Potion of Mana Energy. All right, let's give it to Lixlow and see what happens. I'm much obliged, pray to me for a good performance. So, Lixlow wants us to pray to them. Uh, that, that whole sentence just confuses me. Anyway, moving on. Oh, Rumo is back. Good day, Potion Merchant. I wonder what the outcome was. We gave Rumo the potion of good health. Did you by any means check the results of yesterday's race? I did not actually, but I have a feeling you're about to tell me about it. I was expecting a towering headline about the unfortunate death of a racing legend. So I'm taking it to me not it didn't work out. Why was I surprised to read that Atreus finished the race outrageously alive? Okay, I mean, we did provide Rumo with a potion of good health. I'm not surprised that Atreus finished the race and is still among the living, but let's see where the story takes us. After he finished the race, he seemed in even better form than usual. Yeah, that makes sense, but maybe we're playing the long game, because it did say that the potion of good health could have some negative effects. His usual cuts and smaller wounds almost completely vanished as he held his interview. Okay. That tracks with what the potion description said. So in conclusion, he's still with us mortals. That's not what we agreed on. All right, so now we've got a dialogue option here. I wasn't in the mood for committing a crime or potion crafting isn't exactly reliable science. <clears throat> I'm gonna go with the left. I just didn't feel like permanently retiring Atreus. That's pretty haughty coming from a witch without a license. I mean, running an illegal potion shop is one thing but accomplice to permanent retirement? That's something entirely different, Rumo. It was probably the right thing to do. Thanks for coming around, Rumo. I'm glad we can see eye to eye on this. Maybe we shouldn't meddle with such a bright burning light. It possibly wouldn't even help the popularity of death, but decrease it even further. I mean, I feel like death isn't that popular no matter what, but I mean, Rumo is a grave tender. They probably have a different opinion. Also, I finally have the time to put all the zombies back into their perch. So, I guess we helped Rumo anyway? And clean up. You wouldn't believe how many bones were falsely sorted. It's really nice finally giving the place a little spring cleaning. So, we didn't complete the request that Rumo came in here for. Uh, but it does seem like we helped them do their job a little bit better. So that's nice. The only thing that's a clause at my blossom is that I'm missing five of my zombies. Oh, well, 
Are we gonna have to brew a potion to help Rumo find their missing zombies? This is damn necromancer and vampire crowd. They are also affected by the corpse shortage. Hmm, interesting. So now they're stealing my zombies to use them as mana vessels and recruit them in their undead army. What? <laughs> so vampires are and necromancers are stealing zombies from the grave tender to build undead armies? Okay, let's see where this goes and see what kind of potion that we might need to brew up to help Rumo with this problem. Ideally, they would try to steal fresh corpses to resurrect them as ghouls, but my graveyard is all but empty. So how can we help you further, Rumo? I'm not a great fighter, as you may have guessed. Oh, are we going to need to make a strength potion or something that can help Rumo fend off the vampires and necromancers that come try to steal the zombies from I just wish there was something I could do to protect them. Something I could give them to resist or escape the necromancers. Ah, okay, so Rumo doesn't want a potion for themselves. They want a potion for the zombies to resist or escape the necromancers. It's their home, but fighting with a dead body is difficult. I feel like Potion of Invisibility would work really well in this scenario. Let's read it. This potion grants its user invisibility. It also turns every object invisible it comes in touch with. The duration of the invisibility is depending on how long the object is soaked in the potion. Beware, sound, smell, and touch of the invisible object aren't masked. This is, this is what we're going to go for, because if the necromancers can't see the zombies, they can't take them from the graveyard. So we need the sound of cat paws, a chalice of rainwater, a crushed starry night, and a cut temple rat tail. So I already know what three and four are. Let's take a look at uh, Sound of Cat Paws and Chalice of Rainwater. All right, so Chalice of Rainwater is this little test tube. Rainwater that is collected from the Chalice of Jungle Plants. And then Sound of Cat Paws. The Sound of Cat Paws from a long time ago, trapped in this glass. Okay, so first Cat Paws, second Chalice of Rainwater. Got it. Cat Paws is in this little jar with cat ears. In it goes, sound of cat paws, then a chalice of rainwater, I don't see that over here, ah, this should be it, oh, it has a little cloud, how cute, oh, and it sounds like it's raining, I really like that one too, all right, in goes the chalice of rainwater, and then next is a crushed starry night, which have here. Let's go crush this in the mortar and pestle. So you don't have to zoom into the cutting board and mortar and pestle to use them. You can do it from this angle where you have more of the wide view. Just put the item in this case. Just put the item where you want it and then click on the object to perform the action and it still works the same. Same with the cauldron, you don't have to zoom in to put ingredients in. You can be kind of in this wide view and just click on the cauldron. Then last, last we needed a cut temple rat tail. So let's grab a rat tail. Um, we used one earlier, so are we out of temple rat tails? Ah, no, here's one, good. Let's cut this quickly and get it in the cauldron. That was our last ingredient. So let's brew up this potion and that looks right. We have got a potion of invisibility. All right, Rumo the Grave Tender, here you go. Oh, thank you. I'll give them the potion as soon as I'm back. All right, two more dialogue options. Greet your wandering souls from me. Or what is even the difference between a ghoul and a zombie? Um, I'm kind of interested what Rumo has to say about the difference between a ghoul and a zombie. Well, zombies are corpses which got infected with a virus that controls the body of this corpse. They're a swarm intelligence, mostly mentally limited alone, getting smarter in numbers. Okay, so that's zombies. The corpse's brain and the virus are entering a symbiotic relationship. That's why they are still retaining part of their former personalities. Okay, interesting explanation. While ghouls are corpses whose soul or brain got reactivated and are now living in their rotting bodies. Their intelligence and processing power is linked to the condition of their brain by the time they're reactivated. Okay. That's why people with a bashed in head seem less intelligent than a single zombie. I wish you a beautiful night, witch. 
thanks, Rumo, and I'm really happy you weren't mad at me for giving you a good health potion for that centaur. Alright, I bet the, uh, yep, and here he is. I was about to say, I bet Lixla was going to come back next, and here he is in a totally different outfit. So, let's see what happened. Good morning, Lixlo. How are you today? I think it's a rather marvelous morning to sunbathe in my presence. I'm not sure how much sun a place like the Undercity would get. I'm assuming it's underground with a name like the Undercity, but it could just be um, kind of a colloquial name. It's the Undercity because it's the underbelly or something like that. But in my mind, it's underground. You probably already heard about my debut yesterday, but don't worry, I saved the exclusive story just for you. I am a potion maker, not a journalist, but thanks. On the day of praise and offering, I drank the potion you gave to me and walked out in front of the crowd at the big plaza. We gave Lixlo the potion of mana energy. So I wonder what happened. I felt an immeasurable power surge inside me. I created a petal shower, letting it rain down on the crowd. Okay, so he did magic. Then I climbed invisible stairs to sit on a flying throne made out of pure light. I mean, it does sound like the potion of mana energy worked out well. These all sound like very godly displays. I let fireworks explode above the plaza, which when coming down turned into little paper butterflies. And I wish real fireworks did that. That sounds really cool, actually. As a little treat, I gave some of the folks in mage robes a mana burst. I was pulling one magic trick after another, enticing the crowd around me before I declared with letters burning in front of me, my divinity. So Luxlo did all these magic tricks. Uh, the petal showers, the fireworks that turned into paper butterflies, and then he just wrote, like, in the sky with fire, I am a god, believe in me? Oh, well, I guess Luxlo's over, and Rumo's back again. I didn't expect to see them again. First, they came in and uh, heavily implied we should help them retire Atreus, and we used the potion of good health, which did the opposite effect. Atreus is in top form and won the race, but Ruben got to catch up on some housekeeping, organizing bones, cleaning the graveyard, stuff like that. And then we gave them a potion of invisibility so the zombies could hide from the necromancers that tried to steal them. So now Rumo's back. I wonder what their next request is. Good day, my friend. Oh, your potion worked marvelously. Great. That is great to hear. I'm glad it helps. My zombies are safe and sound roaming around my graveyard. Perfect. Thank you, Rumo. What a spectacle your potion brought upon us. When I let the zombies drink my potion, they just vanished. It was a potion of invisibility. That was the intended effect, so I'm glad it worked out the way that I hoped. I was shocked at first, frantically calling for them. I felt relieved when I heard the familiar groans of my friend. The necromancer arrived and got spooked by the unidentified groaning. But not before Alfred chomped on the wand from one of these fellas. <laughs> I'm assuming Alfred is the name of one of Rumo's zombies. You should have seen their face when they saw a huge bite mark appearing on their showy staff. Getting into a fight with invisible zombies is something they'll think about twice from now on. Good, so we solved this problem for Rumo. I'm really happy none of my zombies got abducted. I'm also happy, Rumo. Glad we could help. Thank you for protecting my family. At least one of the many problems, like guarding a horde of undead, could be solved. I finally had time to completely clean up my garden. Sweeping dust, finding new homes for pottery spiders, and polishing gravestones. I wonder what pottery spiders are. Are those spiders that just live in, in pottery, or are they a specific type of spider? While I was cleaning up, I found some old graves I nearly forgot about. Oh, okay, interesting. I planted new flowers on their graves. I was trying to match the little tidbits I remember about their lives. But there was one grave I found while working, which name was almost completely peeled off. So I guess the name was peeled off the gravestone, so Rumo couldn't remember who it was. And I don't remember who lies there. So that does sound like they Rumo forgot who was in this particular grave. I know it's an embarrassing thing for a grave tender to say. A gravestone without a name, an unknown corpse, that's something a grave tender has to prevent at all costs. Okay, so I think we'll probably need to help Rumo with a potion to identify this person. So I dug up the grave in hope of finding something to identify the body. I found bones and cloth pieces, okay? 
but the real find was a little sealed box I unfortunately couldn't pry open. I really want to give this grave its name back. My owner is a grave tender, demands it. Okay, so I think we need to help Rumo with this. Maybe there are still people out there who'd be glad knowing where their remains. You proved yourself as a trusting friend. Oh, thanks, Ruma. I'm glad you feel that way. Can you grant me a favor one last time? Please give me something to drink that'll help me discover this corpse's identity. So what we know is Rumo has a gravestone with no name on it. They dug up the grave and found bone cloth and a sealed box. And now they want a potion to drink that'll help them discover the corpse's identity. So let's take a look at the potion book. I don't, all right, let's go back to the beginning. Good health, nope, mana energy, no. Herbal tea, no. I don't think wobbly consciousness would help either. Regular energy, I don't think so. True alloy, no, no. Hmm, I don't think potion of truth. Ooh, potion of acid spit. So we read before this potion turns saliva into a green slime, which is corrosive, and it corrodes through almost any material except organic matter. The slime stays corrosive for around a minute and 20 to 40 seconds. This slime is so thick that choking on it is a possible threat. Do not use for cleaning dishes. So this is possible because Rumo asked for something they could drink. So if they took this potion and got acid spit, they could spit on the box to open it. And maybe there would be some information in there. So potion of acid spit, the possibility. Um, hmm. Potion of Greater Senses. This potion enhances the senses of its user. Sight, hearing, smell, taste, and touch. I don't think that would be helpful. So I think we'll go with Potion of Acid Spit. In theory, Rumo will drink the Potion of Acid Spit, get Acid Spit from the potion, and then spit on the box. And once the box has been corroded by the acid, Rumo should be able to open it and see what's inside, which will hopefully help them identify the corpse. So we need a corrosive swallow feather, a cut thousand-eyed pumpkin, golden tooth booze, and a crushed deadly goose tooth. So far the only ingredient we've used so far is golden tooth booze. I know what that one is, but I'm not sure about the others. So we need a corrosive swallow feather. The corrosive swallow males carry a marvelous but deadly feather dress. Their deadly dances are meant to impress females. So kind of a greenish feather. Then we also need a deadly goose tooth from one of the deadliest predators in the wild. So it just looks like a fang with some blood on the end. And then also a cut thousand eye pumpkin. I'm not seeing thousand eye pumpkin in here, but based on this little picture next to the description, it's probably just one of those pumpkins that has a bunch of holes cut in it. So we're gonna go with that and see what happens. So first, a corrosive swallow feather, right there. Into the cauldron it goes. Now we'll take a pumpkin. I'm gonna say this is a thousand eye pumpkin. Hopefully it works. We'll cut it up. Into the cauldron it goes. And then golden tooth booze, and then crushed deadly goose tooth. So there's golden tooth booze. And then a deadly goose tooth, which looks like a fang. Um, this thing looks vaguely fang-like, so I'm gonna go with that. All right, it needs to be crushed, so into the mortar and pestle it goes. And into the cauldron. All right, so we should have a potion of acid spit. That looks right. Let's double check. Yep, that is the potion of acid spit. So let's give it to Rumo and see what happens. Thank you. I'll see you soon. You're welcome, Rumo. Let us know how it goes. Oh, uh, Luxlow is back again. I wasn't expecting this. Good morning. How is my favorite protege doing? And two dialogue options. How is my favorite god doing? Or so I'm not your only protege? So uh, this wording, how is my favorite protege doing, does imply that we're not Lixlo's only protege. Are they going around to every potion seller in town just getting advice? So I'm not your only protege? I don't need to be jealous. None of them has your talent or bewitching personality. 
Oh my goodness, so we're not the only protege. Now right before you stands an almost fully ascended god thanks to you, at least Lixlow is giving credit where credit is due. They realize that they wouldn't have gotten to this point without our help. Myths and rumors are already running wild in the city about my fabled confrontation with one of the local deities. Ooh, it sounds like uh, Lixlow got in some sort of fight with another god. Now for the next big step. I plan a great ceremony to... Why are you looking at me like that? How, how did Lixlow know I was looking at them like that? <laughs> Oh, of course, forgive my hastiness. You want to hear all about how I confronted the jealous god. Yes, what happened? What is the source of the tension between you and this other god? So that's how it went. I felt the magic circulate through my body. I arrived at the duel place and our fight began. So looks like I was getting into duels with other gods. Is, are they going to ask for some sort of potion to make them stronger to help them win this fight? I unleashed my complete magical catalog. I let portals appear out of nowhere from which all kinds of weapons appeared, flying directly at them. I was opening the earth beneath them while covering myself in an armor of acid. It looks like this potion that we gave Lixlow really helped them out a lot. In the end, I detained him with his own clothes. They declared me the winner of the duel, recognizing my strength. Alright, so Lixlow just came to report that he was in a duel and that they won thanks to our help. So. Great to hear. I thought they were going to ask us for a potion to help them win another duel. I guess not. Let's see how it went for Rumo with the potion of acid spit. Thank you so much. Ooh, it sounds like it went well. I could find the name of the owner of the grave. I drank the potion you brewed for me right after arriving at my cemetery. I felt a weird prickle, then the urge to vomit. <laughs> I spit out a bunch of green slimes, which immediately ate through my lawn. Oh, sorry about that, Rumo. I didn't think about the other stuff that the acid might ruin. I was quite disgusted at first, but then I got it. I spat the upcoming slime on the sealed box and it went right through the cover. Okay, so Rumo did exactly what I thought they would do, which was spit the acid on the box. So that seems to have worked. I picked up a silver medallion before vomiting acid again. Oh no, I hope they didn't vomit on the medallion and ruin it. Then I waited for the attacks to calm down. Okay, good. Seems like Rumo is pretty intelligent. So they spit on the box, they got a medallion out of the box, and then they waited to stop spitting acid before proceeding any further so they didn't ruin the medallion that they found in the box. You couldn't find any other way to help me, could you? Uh-oh. Anyway, when I finally calmed down, I looked into the medallion. Okay, so the medallion wasn't ruined. It sounds like Rumo was just being a little bit snarky about the fact we made them vomit acid. And there was a picture and a name in it. Okay, great. So it sounds like the medallion helped identify the unmarked grave, which was the goal here. The name is Leafy Quasion. I remember knowing a nymph with that name has been buried here a long time ago. I knew that most of them are living in the harbor, working with the fishermen. I asked around and found an old colleague of hers, Maliqua. She told me about her death 50 years ago, an accident. She's the only one I found who remembered her. She gave me some seashells. They're used as ornaments in her homeland. I thanked her and she promised to visit her grave from time to time. She hasn't been here yet. I decorated the grave with seashells and gave it a name once again. I tried to make it look like a natural beach. So that's that. Thank you for helping me out once again. You're welcome, Ruma. I'm glad everything worked out in the end. It feels good to finally have things in order, at least for the most part. I will strive to make this graveyard the most welcoming place I can. So people can find a home here, a good place to bid farewell. So it feels like in not complying with Rumo's initial request of uh, retiring Atreus, maybe we did help them find a little bit of purpose in their role as a grave tender, even if there aren't as many new clients. Uh, lately, it seems like Rumo is satisfied, which is nice. Thank you once again for all your help. You really became someone worthy of calling a friend. Oh, thanks, Rumo. The story up until now has been great. Like I said before, all of the characters have been really well written and it is nice to see how the effects of the potions used do unfold into something unexpected. If you're ever around my garden, swing by. My friends and I would love to invite you to our tea party. By friends, does he mean other flower people? or the invisible zombies because one of those sounds a lot more appealing than the other if you decide to die one day 
I'll make sure that you get a special place in my yard where your name won't be forgotten. Oh, thanks, Rumo. We've got a, another dialogue choice here. I'd, it'd be an honor to rest in your garden one day, or I don't mind being forgotten. Um, I'm going to say it'd be an honor to rest in your garden one day. I feel like what Rumo is offering here is very much a gift from a place of friendship just based on the character. I feel like this is something that is really heartfelt for this character. The honor is mine. I'll make sure it will be remembered for generations to come. I hope you reap the reward for your remarkable work. Um, by reward, do you mean payment? Because this, I mean, this is a potion shop. It is my job to make potions. I really hope these customers have been paying me. <laughs> May sunlight lead you the way and will rain spur your growth. Farewell, friend. That was nice. All right, so this is sadly the end of the demo. It was super fun. Everything I hoped for, I really enjoyed everything about Potion Tales. The characters are great. The sound di design was wonderful. I like the I like the whole atmosphere of the game. It really does feel like you're running uh, in underground potion shop. I mean, you are running an illegal underground potion shop, but the game developers did a really great job of making the atmosphere very immersive, which I really enjoyed. So if you're interested in Potion Tales, the demo is available for free on Steam. And if you would like to know more about my thoughts on the game and hear a little bit about the design process for Potion Tales, please check out my blog, All Access Arcade, where I have a mini review and an interview with the developers. Thanks so much for watching and happy gaming!